Hello and welcome to another Miniature Realms video and uh, back to the kind of unboxing review videos for Warlord Games' Epic Battles American Civil War. Now, on the previous ones I've um, done individual unboxing videos and um, kind of reviewed thing, each thing at a time and, and there's been a little bit of repetition on those especially with the talk around the, the comparison of cost and things like this. So this is wave three and the final wave right now that we that, that we're aware of so wave three of this this launch um of this new scale um from warlord games um and this new kind of new kind of box game so to speak using the black powder rules so if you if you are new to this and you haven't seen the other videos on the channel there's a big unboxing that explains what the the game's all about um and then i've unboxed each of the releases as they've come so but what i've decided to do for this video is to do a review of it all in one go, so the whole wave. Um, the main reason for that being is that um, the items released in wave three were probably the most controversial. I don't know if controversial is the right word actually, but the pricing was controversial. I'm not sure there's anything controversial about the miniatures on their own, um, but the, the pricing did seem to be a little bit out of whack with the rest. So what I thought I'd do, rather than repeat a conversation around pricing in each video, I thought I'd uh, do a big unboxing of the whole of the Wave 3, minus the wagon and the limbers, which I haven't purchased. And um, we'll discuss that a little bit as well with the, the pricing chat. But I uh, thought we'd do a big unboxing of, of all of the things. Um, and then I'll kind of include a little bit of commentary and my thoughts on the pricing um, at the end. So let's get stuck in. We'll start with the uh, dismounted cavalry. So here we are. Um, I've received these today, only just come, come in the post. I've not seen anything else online much about this. I mean, a couple of groups I've seen, uh, uh, a couple of post people have said they mentioned they've got them, that those have arrived, but I get the impression that maybe um, lots of people didn't bother going in for the for the way three. That was definitely something that um, um, I've seen mentioned. So maybe there's not so many of them around. Obviously, you don't know what the actual sales figures are. So I'm just I'm just making assumptions. But your standard um, new sort of uh, look for the boxes. So black powder, epic battles, dismounted cavalry. This has a little sticker which I saw on some of them for wave um, two. So limited edition launch metal figures they were originally advertised as resin and, and as far as we are aware it's because of production issues there would have been a delay to have them in resin maybe it's boats from china and things like that i'm not sure um but we have them in metal and um, did you check my way to um kind of unboxings and chats about those um oh, i i'm happy about that i, I uh, normally prefer plastic and resin miniatures but uh, having had the limited edition generals in resin with the starter bundle i didn't like the resin, resin very much at all it's that soft rubby resin which is almost impossible to clean out properly as you see this says 54 warlord resin epic battles so on the wave two stuff i had there was a sticker over this um, so maybe these were boxed and, and packaged before they got to that stage. So there's a bit of a mix in the way that it's um, sent out. So this is quite interesting. So 54 miniatures, which I counted when I was uh, working out pricing and things. And this is 12 Warlord Resident Epic Battle Scale Horse Hold of Miniatures. So there looks like there's nine horses there. Um, and if you're saying 12, then you're including each of the, the actual men themselves as one of the 12. And that, that one's part of that horse miniature, that cavalry miniature. That seems a little bit of a stretch in the description. Um, and then there's two screws of the plastic bases. So so you get no banners in these, no flags in these like you do with the other kits because they're obviously not needed. Standard plastic bases, we'll put those to one side. So we've seen all those already. And then as before, each of the different components um, comes in labeled bags. So you've got D4, D5, D3, D2, I assume that's D1. Um, and then we've got uh, these. So what I'm gonna do now is just pause a second, open them up. Um, I don't think you wanna watch me opening bubble wrap. It's not so, so exciting. So here we are. I'm going to try and go through them relatively quickly, otherwise this video is going to be massive. Uh, but I do like to show each sculpt. So this is um, D1 sculpt, and you get, um, I have six of these. Um, and this is D2, and I have three of those. And we have D3, again I have six of those. 
So they're nice. They are really nice sculpts. Now D4 and another six of those. D5 and I have another six of those. Now I think they're really nice. They look really well proportioned. If I uh, grab some of the Iron Brigade to go next to it. Iron Brigade have obviously got tall hats, but the standing man's head is the same height as the, as the Iron Brigade, so I don't, I don't think we've got any problems with scale there at all. Um, and as miniatures themselves, I think they're really, really nice. And um, I haven't owned lots of miniatures at this scale, but of the ones I've seen, um, they are my favourite sculpts for so 15 millimeter esque shall we say um sculpts right then in terms of the actual cavalry itself so you've got h4 and h6 and you get two of each so that was h4 this is h6 so perfectly reasonable whole, whole sculpts um i think they're quite nice um i've mentioned before that uh, one of the alternatives for this is, is using calistra i find their horses a little bit too small but it's a personal thing um, i quite like the look of these and then we have the rest of it the final pack is h1 to um h3 h5 h7 to h9 i mean a lot to you but it's basically they're all individual sculpts and i was right in my conclusions about uh for it to be to them all be counted that they are counting i believe the mounted cavalry as two models even though it's a one piece model so that's the first holder on foot second holder on foot and they're nice enough sculpts they really are and there's your third holder that one's actually mounted so we do have nine horses and uh three guys but as i say one of the guys is part of that same model so the count that is two unless i've my maths are wrong which they could be and then your remaining four horses I'm doing all all of the sets in one go and have the chance of being and that's the last one um as a kit i like it it's really really nice um yeah we'll come back to the pricing all, all in one go as i say i want to do it two separate halves of the of the video really but as a kit in itself and as the sculpts uh, i like them um you there are options with Calistra. um a peter big might be okay they might be on a little large, on the large side i use their mounted generals and the mounted generals aren't too far off so they might work okay for this as well but their infantry tends to be on the big side so might be an issue but anyway let's move on to the next box so on to the skirmishers so, so same deal with the, with the box um sticker on there saying launch edition metal figures um because it's also resin there um, um, and that's a picture of the contents of the box so 40 warlord resin epic battle scale well, skirmisher miniatures so metal not resin and two stands of bases so again let's open them up and show you what you get inside so standard affair there's two strips of the bases as usual we'll pop them to one side um, and then all the individual little pock um, pocket bags um, with the different sculpts labelled on. So I'll do the same as last time, I will sort them all out and then we'll have a quick squeeze through at all of them. And here we are. So there are 10 different sculpts of which you uh, you um, get uh, four of each. So uh, quite a good amount of variety, which is really, really, really good. And they continue the same way as everything else has for this this release. Um, the sculpts are incredible, in my opinion, for this scale. Really, really, really nice. Loads of character, really crisp detail, clearly 3D designed. Um, and I really like them. I really, really do. Um, would I like the price? Well, as alluded to, we'll come on to that a little bit later, but that was really, really good. So I'll try and whiz through for the other nine so we're not here all day. But so this one is leaning over a cut down wooden um, tree stump, which is really, really nice as well. So there's some good character in these. So that's number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. So there's obviously a, a real mixing uniform again. So they're designed to work with both sides. 
that will please some people, not others. I definitely think. I think all of these kits as a whole, apart from the Home Brigade, obviously, um, work much better if you're building a, a, a Confederate force. So now we are with uh, number eight, another one lying down, leaning over a rock, I think, or something, a smaller rock. So the third, second one of those. Um, number ten, and there's another one leaning down over a rock, and uh, very nice years too. A little bit of flashing and stuff to clean up, and there, there have been on all of them, but metal miniatures are extremely easy to do. Um, I'm a big fan of the quality of these sculpts, as I've mentioned before. I really like them. They're my favourite range in this sort of scale range from 10 to 15 mil. Um, but that's for reasons of proportion and quality of the faces. They feel like um, they're carrying something down from larger scale miniatures into the smaller scales, and I like that. And I think there's the 3D the ability. They'll obviously be made designing these as three ups, which a lot of smaller manufacturers that sculpt in greens may not be able to do. I don't know how they work. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my naivety there a little bit, but I get the impression sometimes some of the small scale miniatures out there and some of the smaller companies that they are designing them and, and sculpting them in the scale that the, you, you have them in, and they're just casting them straight afterwards. Um, so I think there's an advantage there. That I appreciate there are things that people don't like in terms of the mixed boxes and they're not all union style uniforms or confederates etc etc there are arguments both sides for that it is what it is um, I'm happy with them and the, the quality of the sculpts um, has a large effect in there with me um, in terms of what I like the price again we'll, we'll talk about it at the end anyway let's move on to the next packet so we have the the new extra command packs. There's a Confederate command and a Union command. Um, so the um, slightly different to the original resin ones. Confederate command, you do get another Robert E. Lee, um, which I suppose makes sense when you assume that the the original with the release were limited edition. But I think everyone had them, so in, in one sense it would have been nice to have someone else. Um, and you get Stonewall Jackson and you get a banner bearer, flag bearer, and then for the Union you get Ulysses S. Grant, another Mead, um, um, and another banner bearer. Now I've picked up extra sets of these, um, that was, some of that was before I discovered how good Peter Pig were for this, but uh, again these are in my opinion going to be superior sculpts, I can see that already and based on the other ones. Um, I'll just convert the um, the Lee and the Mead to to other generals, um, and I'll quite enjoy doing that. And that was that was the that was the plan for buying extras with them, knowing that the sculpt quality will be good. Um, they do cost more. Again, I'll cover that in the final price wrap up at the end. They do cost more than buying them from generals from Clister or, or um, um, Peter Pig would do, but um, they're not so far out of whack that um, I regret doing it, so to speak. Let's look at them quickly then. So we'll open up the Union Command and have a little. Look. I think it's quite nice, good enough quality. Um, I'm really happy that it's in metal, not in the resin, because it was really hard to clean up before. Um, I think the only reason it must be in two parts, I would say, is because of the your, your flagpole. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure. They didn't class it as two miniatures, based on the. Um, I wonder if they would have done the way they, they class um, um two miniatures joined together as uh, the um, dismounted cab thing. But um, yeah, I think it's quite nice. But let's have a look at the more exciting ones anyway. So this is your alternative mead. Alternative to the limited edition one. I mean, at this scale, it, it doesn't matter as much. So I will um, decide who he's going to be, make any adjustments needed and, um, and crack on. But really really lovely sculpts these are at this scale regardless of your opinions on these releases um i think most people recognize that they have done a very nice job with the miniatures um even if you didn't agree with the um the design of some of them in terms of the quality of the sculpting i think they're really really nice and and this is grant I quite like the pose definitely recognizable from the pose and again, I think it's a really nice sculpt, especially facially, and the whole scene is quite well proportioned as well. Very cool. And on to the Confederate pack now. Similar deal with the, the flag bearer, the banner bearer. Um, two part. 
really nice it's got a quite a cool moustache different headgear and i'm sure you can mix and match the way the rest of this range is i'm sure you can mix and match these across both sides if you really really wanted to especially for command stands and things and i may will do that just to get a bit more variety but he's quite cool but again let's just look at the um the ones we're more interested in the generals so robert e lee the uh the other version of, of that um i definitely don't like this anywhere near as much as the limited edition one i've already painted so that's good doesn't mean i want to paint this up as as lee and, and change it around um i will mm, make him into someone else i think uh, i'll do some look at some pictures and things originally my thought was to uh, add a bigger beard and make him into long street and i think that might still work um, but we shall see and the last one and um, we have jackson himself so um again looks really really cool um again i'm sure you could be so easy to swap bits about and add a tiny bit of green stuff here and there if you like doing a bit of uh converting you can make these into so many different things move the head round or something or other but um he's quite cool i'm surprised they didn't go for any of the kind of seminal pose just like the hand in the air and stuff but maybe it's nice that they've gone less cheesy i suppose he does have his hand just back there so yeah I'm, i like it i'm a fan of them um, that's why i bought extras to do some converting with i um, can definitely recommend them i think if you can see that here in the in the video as well as i can see it in my eyes probably not i'm struggling with the focus today but the quality of his face is absolutely fantastic it really really is um, and uh, those are really really nice miniatures regardless of the prices and things right then the last pack to look at so the command strips um i've picked up quite a few of these when they originally ordered this wave three i just picked up one and then when i started organizing the antietam battle i had planned so if you're uh, new to the channel and it does interest you i've got a series of vlogs where i'm talking about my plans for this game um and one of them is is doing an antietam battle and doing the cornfield so as i started working out the order of battle and what i wanted to do i um I decided i needed a lot of command strips or third party um, and i made the decision to go with the continuity even though it was more expensive um, but um this is not super exciting to anyone who knows the plastics is exactly the same sculpt um that, and it even has the little knobs on the bottom to put into the base as well so it is exactly the same as the the, the plastic one um and you get five in a pack and that's that's the review really there's no point in going about it anymore um they're nice i like them originally those people who don't like them because i don't like the mixed hats etc won't like them um but it is what it is um and you can buy them in packs on of, of five strips for for 12 quid anyway we'll uh, we'll talk about the prices in a minute so well that was wave three minus the wagon and minus the limber and um i think when the the wave was announced i was very quick to get excited and looked at the bundles and I, I i bought one bundle i bought the confederate bundle and added the second union command um because you get two packs of skirmishes and two packs of dismounted cav um and i thought that may well be enough i'm not going to burn a lot of cavalry there weren't there wasn't that much cavalry in in, in used in the in the traditional ways in the american civil war anyway i looked at the kind of games i want to play i don't think i'll be using a lot so i wanted minimal amount of them anyway and then skirmishes you don't necessarily need them but they are handy and nice to have to represent skirmishes in black powder um, and i am using black powder for the games at least for now so again i thought a couple of boxes that may well be enough just to whip out and represent units here and there um even if i cut it right down and just using an individual stand they go a long way then so thoughts on it all um the wagon and the limber were just even for my excited almost day of release day of email coming in ordering straight away the wagons and limber just seemed a little bit too much i definitely thought i don't need a wagon really um i might buy some stuff like that in the future but 12 pound maybe maybe it's only one but they're a lot cheaper elsewhere and then the limber what scared me was how many i might need um you can get away without using them in game but i thought if I've, i'm building two massive armies i may well have um 15 guns aside maybe more you know you start doing the maths if you want to limber for every one that's crazy and then you start cutting it down a little bit and think um 
or maybe I'll just have two or three aside or four or five aside maybe to represent when things are moving but even if I'm buying only three aside that's still six wagons at 12 pounds each which is it just just seems very very expensive for for what you use them for um, regardless of whether it's expensive for the amount of metal it is and how it compares with the rest of the range so at this time I haven't bought them um, so there's not a complete review of, of the wave but I'll do the best I can um, and then it brings us on to all the kind of usual stuff about um, the pricing and things like that and I'll pop some prices on the screen the people who haven't seen the original ones but um, the the prices basically break down at this. So for cavalry, um, warlord um, charge sixty-seven pence each. Um, Calistra thirty-eight and Peter Pig eighty-eight. So Calistra by, by far the cheapest, and warlord somewhere in the middle there. Um, and then inventory warlord it works out of thirteen pence. And this is for the metal ones. I'm not talking about the plastics that come in the starter. I'm talking about the wave two and wave three prices. And they're based on metal because they're all metal here now, so they compare even easier. But thirteen pence each. Calistra's nineteen and Peter Pig's forty pence. Now that was based on wave two. Bearing in mind, based on wave two, wave three is a little bit different. So I thought the value of the Iron Brigade and the Zoo was pretty good. So let's look at the, the dismounted cab first and kind of analyse that a little bit. Um, Calistra packs are all £6 each. Um, 19 p each for inventory, 38 for cav, as already mentioned. Um, so horse holder packs are essentially cav prices in terms of horses, minus the riders. Um, but there are six horse holders you get in those packs. And then Peter Pig, um, their packs are £3.50 each for eight infantry or four cav. So the horse, horse holder packs are slightly different and you can either get six empty horses, which work out 58 p each, four horse holders, um, and, which is basically the cav price of their mounted horse holders, work out at 88 p each, or a mix of two horse holders and four empty horses, which works out about 58 p each, which is probably the best value pack to do. And then we look at the, the, the Warlord Games prices and it's um, RRP is £40. We need to bear in mind, and I've not worked out the prices on this, but we do need to bear in mind that you can pick these up at um, discounted retail rates, usually 20% off, which you can't do with things like Peter Pig and uh, um, Calistra. Um, so 20% off, you're looking at maybe £32, which does make them significantly cheaper, but still £40 um, it's, it's very expensive. So Warlord does base in stands, but the only way of comparing it by mini versus mini really, so 58 dismounted um, models, which is what you get. Um, I've put nine horses and three holders, um, even though one's a bit, as I say, dodgy, whether you think it's a separate miniature or not. Um, that works as an average of 60 pence each, um, or 53p I think at the party prices. So they are significantly more expensive um, in, in the Calistra and um, they're all thereabouts with, with Peter Pig prices. Um, but the scary bit is when you start looking at the price of the box compared to their own release in Wave 2. So in Wave 2, remember the infantry were 13 pence and the cavalry were 67 pence. So it gets a bit scary. So based on that, um, so not including the three horse holders, there are 54 men. So 54 times 13 is £7.2 and the cav at 9 times 67 at £6.3. So based on the Wave 2 cav and inventory prices, this box should have been £13.5 RRP, not £40. Now I appreciate there are there's some flex flexibility in there. There are different kinds of sculpts, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I get all of that, but the price difference is horrendous, really. It really is horrendous. When you're looking at it's, it, how much those inventory work out. So the corresponding numbers from Calistra would be about £12. I think you have to spend about £12. So it compares with the 13 if they were priced at Wave 2 prices. And Peter Pig would cost you about 24 50 for a similar kind of amount. So £40 is significant. It really is. Next, skirmishes. So your skirmishes from Warlord are £25 RRP, so they were a little bit cheaper. Um, something that seemed to be lost when they priced up the dismounted cav. Um, but still, um, so it's around £20 from a third party. You may you get 40 men in the pack, which is 10 stands. We know they're on twos now. And so it's still a whopping 63 pence per mini. 
compared to their own Wave 2 infantry prices, it should be £5.20 for that. So if it was priced the same as the Zouaves or the Iron Brigade. Um, or you should get 192 models in the pack. So just mind-blowing change in price from Wave 2 to Wave 3. Some people didn't like Wave 2's prices. I personally didn't have a problem with them at all. I think I showed in the previous video, and if you do the per mini comparisons, even though they're on strips, if you do the per mini comparisons, they're, they're, they're cheaper than some of the, some of the Clistra stuff, and definitely cheaper than Peter Pig. So I didn't have an issue with it, but these, it's just crazy price difference. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest problem here. It doesn't really matter how much, in some ways, how much it compares to Callistra and how much it compares to Peter Pig. They're, they're good guides, but they are all of their own company, produce their own miniatures. They are different quality sculpts um, and all of that. And there's, there's variety for people, but comparing with their own range in Wave 2 is crazy. Wave 2 is compared to Wave 1. Metal or resin, plastics compared to a start set. It's hard to do. Start sets are often lost leaders. The cost of producing mass plastic sprues very much cheaper. So I think there was always a struggle with that comparison. But the comparison between these and their own Wave 2 um, releases have to be made. And, and it makes them almost too expensive. And if I sat down and analysed this before I bought them, um, maybe I would have done. I still really like the miniatures and I would have been torn between the quality of the sculpts and, and using Callistra, who you know I'm, I'm not so much a fan of, but for how little you may lose these things in game, that may have been the sensible option. Um, and that's why you see more people going down that route, or a lot of people going down that route. I, I don't know what the figures are like for the sales of these. I think, I imagine they're significantly smaller. Um, I know it's been mentioned a few times that this might be a bit of a trial and maybe the pricing on these was a bit of a trial as well to see how people reacted. Um, so General's pack are £6 from Warlord, so it's £2 each model. That is expensive compared to some other things, but also for the quality of them, I'm quite happy to spend that. Um, and you're thinking when you get them from a third party as well, it gets a little bit cheaper. Um, I think personally the sculpts are way better than Callistra. Um, but Callistra do have a personalities pack for three pound and you get six so the value is isn't comparable there um, and then Peter Pig generals are three pound fifty a pack and you get a general an ADC and a banner bearer um, so they're kind of somewhere in the middle still a lot cheaper and the sculpts are better I think than Callistra and the size seems to match okay I wouldn't delve too much into Peter Pig but the generals is you, you, are not too bad at all and again look back at my videos as a one of the unboxing videos or review videos is of Peter Pig and I do some comparisons and things on to the command strips so it's 12 pound RRP for five strips essentially 50 men that's 24p each so it's double the price of the others in wave two so I'm not going to compare them to the plastics even though you can get the plastic um, on the sprue um, it's still double the price, so again, a little too expensive for sure. Um, if you get them a third party, they might work out around 19 pence, which is about the same as Callistra. So you make your choice there, whether you want to buy Callistra command packs or, or, or get those, but they're definitely more expensive. Uh, yeah, well, the wagons are limber, so I've, I've touched them already. I didn't order them, but price-wise, um, they're a little bit cheaper as usual from from other places so Clistra is six pound for two of them at peter pig it's well, five pounds fifty for one um and i'm not quite sure which route i'm going to go down Clistra seems the sensible one as i mentioned on many of my videos i, I don't like their horses that much They're a bit too small compared to these um but um i might order one from peter pig and just see how it compares with the whole, if it's similar to the Mounted Generals, that might do. But even then, £5.50 if you want a lot of them, it will start to add up. So Calistra, definitely the best value for there. So a lot of rambling there. Um, and this is going to be a longer review than, than normal. So I hope some people have stuck all the way through it. Um, um, I, I'm pretty... Um, complimentary about a lot of Warlord games releases and products. I like to try and be positive about things and, um, and I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of always disliking the big company and seeing them as money grabbing etc etc. Um, I'm just a bit baffled by the pricing on particularly these two boxes. The wagons you could say is a one-off product and it's sort of a bit skewed and you get that sometimes in ranges and whatever but with these being quite core uh, i'm a bit baffled by how much more expensive they are compared to their own wave two and that's the key for me um whether it's 
resin later on when the limited edition in big inverted commas metal versions are finished when the metal when they sort out the resin that these things will probably be this price in in resin which will be even even scarier for the amount of cleanup um, maybe they'll do something maybe they'll listen to the feedback because it's not just from me it's from wider wide in the community about the prices and maybe when they get the resin production in they will actually reduce the the prices of these a little bit but i'd say if you really really want them and if i do decide to get any more i'm definitely going to be looking for third-party retailers with with 20 percent off um but i probably won't need any more luckily um and in terms of command strips i've got all the ones i need paid over the odds but i wanted the um the consistency i say paid over the odds they third party um sellers they do compare price wise with the clistris not too bad um and then the generals i've not got a problem with it they are uh, you know quality premium quality models i think in for this scale and i'm um, happy to pay six pounds for a pack um for sort of centerpieces of the army these yeah i wouldn't if I, if I was helping someone start in this game now i would i would recommend they buy everything else but this i would these i, I couldn't recommend them without covering fully the the, the the fallback on the price and how much more expensive they are because i just can't get my head around it really this is a shame but i'm super excited about this game i'm super excited to get paint on them and talk about them as the the minute the good miniatures they are and not always about the price um i said my bit about price um and now it's i own them i bought them it's done um time to move on and get some stuff painted so if you do like american civil war stuff loads of it on this channel loads of epic battles things um do, don't uh, don't dislike just because i've said a few nice things about warlord and i'd also don't want to get in a massive kind of hating warlord rant in the comments um you obviously you comment what you want but uh, i'm not interested in that i don't dislike them as a company i'm just a little bit baffled by the the price of of those two boxes as i said repeatedly so thanks for watching please do like share and subscribe um check out the other videos based on epic battles on the channel check out the other videos on the channel i do cover a few other games this as well thanks for watching and i'll catch you soon